uh, check engine line will tell me if a sensor's unplugged or something's unplugged. So first and foremost, fuel pressure was too low. Got fuel pressure set. Then it still had a check engine light. So in Motec, yeah, lovely, you don't need different can bridge files and flashing this and flashing that. It's as simple as a click. So you go to here, Huracan model, it's very simple. You see this? Boom! All the different options. We had it set on the RA Plus um, as base, but it's really an R8, so it's a CSPA. So now look at No codes, baby! Face in this video, somebody's gonna ah! <laughs> 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 the man right here. This is my car, you know, but this is like a more like finished one, you know. But I can't wait to get it back. I've been waiting for quite some time now, and like six days now. And man, I just can't wait to just go like. You know what I mean? Hey, you're the question though, son. Mmm. Well, I... <laughs> this is the after hours project. Hey! That thing is fire, dude. You like it? That thing is fire. Yeah, I like... Trimbo's mounted, dump tubes, exhaust. Like a wastegate, right? That's a wastegate? That's a wastegate, yes, yeah. sir. Blow valves go up, up top, you know? Yeah. Here are the turbos. Right here. Nick's got your intercooler over there. Oh, uh, hell, hell. Look at this. Hey, so I, I was thinking, since we love Chick fil A so much, we can put that Chick fil A right here. Awesome. And, and the sheepy. Okay. We'll look pretty sick. What are you doing? We're going to my own car right now. Hey. Ah, sick ass. Ah. Well, <laughs> well, it's 522. It better be running by. Well, it's it's Tuesday, January 28th, you know? It should be running by. How many days are this month? Wait, wait, wait. Hmm. Call, count backwards from the first is Saturday. First is Saturday. Saturday was the 25th, right? No, no, this, man, I suck at that. I'm at I'll see yeah. you guys later. This should be running this week. This is why I never went to college, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> I do not know how to count. Ah, well, I do, but school is just not for everyone. So this car's done? We gonna put the front end together. If you're ever gonna get a flex fuel package from us, please send it on the E. Because I don't have to drain all 18 gallons out and pop 18 gallons of ethanol on it. First world problems, huh? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pump the gas out of that and put it in my Civic, homie. Oh, dude! <laughs> hey, 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 my truck is running low, bro. For real? Yeah. Building two cars a week gets tiring, Nicholas. Well, more than two turbo kits. We built two cars, a lot of production stuff, production Honda, Evo, the whole nine, baby. Last is What's today, Wednesday? You know what I'm gonna do? My buddy, um, one of my good boys. Uh, Vader Driven, follow him. And Danny, and my whole crowd at Import GPS. Our boys, you guys remember that one vlog we did? And Johnny, me, and Alonzo went over to Philly. So, Vader saw this weekend's vlog of us just what the flex fuel packages could do. So he texted me, I need that. So I'm gonna wire him his old ethanol flex fuel kit, make all that for him and ship that to him. That's what I'm gonna work on today. I'm gonna work on stuff that's, I get sit down and just wire and just chill, listen to some music. Kobe. Ah! <laughs> Clearly, Mexicans don't play ball, baby. Alright, so we got Tim's car, Tim and his sons. Yeah, kind of cool. We got our next batch of vehicles in. Since that whole lineup in the front is about to be shipped home, we got a new shipment showing in. Let's get this going, baby. Let's kill it. So today we're gonna work on production lines, and in, in, it's still in full effect, right? Uh, next killer production line. I'm gonna work on the red R8. Take the intake manifold on and put a billet one on there. That should be dope. Um, we have eight caches car on the dyno, just kind of running it, putting some heat cycles through it. I'm about to go turn on right now and drive it. Yeah, we end the week out smooth, right? So, this vlog's gonna be a lot of just us being human, right? Nothing really wild, you know? It's kind of hard to put out a 
crazy vlog twice a week of all the world you know, they take time and we don't have 30 people to our staff. There's 10 of us. So if you guys want us to keep vlogging, you guys can just see it all. Us eating, f***ing around, the whole night. Who's man? Who's man? Let me see, let me see. Yeah. That's a pretty dope picture. I can do the same f***ing picture. The factory in Tickmount from the bottom has uh, fuel, charcoal canister, evap uh, solenoids, and there's one per bank. So what it does, it comes off the, the fuel canister, right? Uh, shit. And it goes like, it, it feeds into this one, and then it goes into a T, then it goes to one solenoid, then another solenoid, then it goes to each banks. And what a bank is, is one half of the engine, the other half of the engine. But there's a lot of this and it clutters on the bottom of the intake manifold. This intake manifold that we have has relocates the fuel rails to the inside. So if you look good in there, the fuel rails on the inside. Factories are on the outside, meaning it allows all that room in there for all this stuff. <clears throat> However, with the fuel rails on the inside, all this has to be relocated. We still keep this through emissions reasons. So I just keep one and with MoTeC, we're able to just utilize and control the the, the canister fumes off of one solenoid versus having two. Um, so I have to replumb the whole system and then I have to extend the wire harness because the plug for these are literally down there. Just extend it to go behind the quarter panel. Um, another thing is running the rails inside there. The low side fuel pressure sensor on a factory intake manifold sits on the outside, it sits here. Um, now I have it relocated way over there right before our flex fuel sensor. So just little things like that we have to adjust. Um, then we have vacuum canisters. Um, so what it does is it, it stores vacuum. Um, these balls, there's one set of balls under the intake manifold, another one over here. We eliminate one because we essentially we don't need that much vacuum because we're getting rid of some of this. So I just keep one set of balls, tap into the intake manifold, goes to a check valve, goes to the canister, the check valve so it doesn't see positive pressure, it just holds vacuum. On top of that, I added dash eighth pipe to dash four fittings on each side. So I have boost wrap map sensor for each side and then blow off valves for each side. This bottom fitting is actually gonna go to the uh, other sensor that looks like this. And then on this side, it's gonna go to the brake booster. So we just still keep a lot of the factory stuff. We just eliminate a lot of it and then clean it all up, make it look nicer. Because if I kept all this, right? Just imagine all this shit in here. So the, the reason why we're even putting a billet intake manifold, I don't want our previous customers that get together, like, oh, do I need one? Listen, when you're putting, pushing big boost, let me show you the factory intake. Where's the factory intake manifold at? The, um, you know, un under 10 pounds of boost, 12 pounds of boost, these things are fine, right? But they're plastic, right? So if you look at this, I mean, it's literally seamed here, right? So in the perfect world, Right, which a lot of people think things operate in perfect world. This will never split. However, now we're starting to get into boost levels above 16, 17 pounds of boost. And we're starting to blow some things up. Now, not engines, I'm talking like, you know, crack an intake manifold, blow O-rings, etc. So, going to a billet intake manifold is not, oh my God, you're gonna gain all this horsepower. You're getting minimal because it's slightly bigger plenum. But what it does is keeps the boost happy, right? Remember, these engines are not designed for forced induction. They come um, naturally aspirated. So running composite intake manifolds, clearly it's a good thing because it keeps temperatures down, etc. Probably have a little bit more heat soak with the billet. We'll see, we'll compare apples to apples. But the bottom portion of the intake manifold is still a composite, okay? So that'll absorb a lot of the heat. On top of that, we run ethanol, so that also helps. So as you see here, these things, we're not gonna run them. And then uh, this is where the factory, um, solenoids go in too, so what it does, it pulses uh, fumes, uh, fuel fumes back into the uh, into the plenum. Um, but we're, we're eliminating that and just running one valve. So these essentially go to one valve per bank, and then it tees and then goes into the charcoal canister. We got rid of all that, we run one solenoid, and then we pulse it into the side of the plenum through MoTeC. Um, factory, it needs two because the way the factory ECU is, but these cars are standalone management, so the beauty to a standalone management is you're able to program it and do whatever the hell you want, right? So, and then another thing you notice is the fuel rails on the outside, okay? 
So these are now on the inside. Uh, the fuel factory fuel, low side fuel pressure sensor usually goes here. However, um, there's no room to put on the inside, so I relocated it on behind the quarter panel. On top of that, I try to get away from anything in barb like this, right? So running, like even with our uh, flex fuel upgrade with factory intake manifolds, um, we actually modify all this so we don't run factory clamps. So if you do our flex fuel stage two plus package, um, we're gonna keep your boost levels probably 12 to 13 pounds of boost for a thousand, thousand fifty wheel horsepower. When you get about 15, 16, 17 pounds of boost, um, these things, you know, aren't, I, I, I've been, you know, running into issues here and there. Some people don't have them, some people do. So that's why we're just putting a billet one on my car just to, cause I'm, I lean in my shit, like straight up. Like I, I go, it's my personal car. I will push it and push it and push it until something breaks. It's just the, the, the way you develop and it's the way you figure out things breaking points, right? I mean, I've taught, like I'm, my peers at Dallas, you know, I was talking to them like, hey, how hard have you pushed a stock engine? Like, oh, no more than a thousand. I'm fucking damn near 1300 horsepower, you know? Um, clearly UGR is making a ton of power. One of their customers um, went uh, 200 and, nine mile an hour at shift sector factory drivetrain factory engine and to make to go 209 and a half mile you're making like 1300 horsepower so clearly ugr got big old cojones too right to, to be pushing these stock engines like that but they have a great program a great tuning you know it's all in the tune right clearly as long as the perfect drill scenario is good it's gonna be good however it gets a hiccup at that kind of power it detonates or something it knocks hard enough it's gonna throw a rod so that's when we don't run customers cars that hard i'll run my own car that hard you know if a customer wants it ran that hard i let them know hey here's the downfalls i do have one customer that likes to run his car that hard his name is mark petro dac that's whatever his name is. that guy's wild bro wild that guy wants all the boost the chances are we're gonna give him one of those yeah pretty nice huh cleans things up so we're gonna torque this down, we're gonna smoke test it to make sure no vacuum leaks and we're done for the day. We'll get here super early in the morning to put the turbo kit on the fuel system and fire it up. Yeah, so that was not the Grubhub person. I just went and asked that innocent civilian. I told him, hey bro, are you from Harvard? He's like, no, no, no. So we're currently waiting for our food right now. Who's man though? So look, breaking his neck. Look at that. Uh -oh. We need our food. We've been waiting way too long. This guy ain't getting no tip, even though we already tipped him, right? Delivered at 9.59 a.m. Wait, 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 wait. That low light, that low light. Look at that. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate it. We just reordered the last order. Grubhub, your customer service is bad. Grubhub, your customer service is a straight L. We had to call American Express and do a chargeback. I'm about to open this window by myself. <laughs> oh, shit. Perfect, thank you. Anybody in the IE area? You know what I mean? Like Temecula and Marina area. Know how to fix headliner and stuff. I want to do like full Alcantara. I'm going to get a chopped off uh, steering wheel right here. Because you need the front. Only models drive like this. <laughs> Thank you so much. You. Have a great day. Appreciate it. We got the food. But an hour late though. Sad boy. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I swear to God, I wish I had you guys' jobs. Oh. What kind of burritos do you guys get? Uh, monster burritos. Monster burritos. Better than the monster way. Huh? Good morning, Shibi. Well, the exhaust. That's who's wrapping the exhaust now, right? Yeah. What's going on, guys? All right. Yeah, so I'll start making water lines for now. What would you say goes into a full build like this? So, eight hours in fuel system. How many hours it takes to build a turbo kit? A day and some change. You're working alone, right? Yeah, Ten hours? Yeah. How long does it take Anthony to do the coolers? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, Ant to do the coolers? Okay. okay. Maybe an hour for each one. Let's say four hours after all the prep. So four, 10, 12, that's 14 plus another eight for fuel system, that's 22. 
Um, clutch works another eight. That's 30 hours. 22? Yeah, 30. And then uh, Motec. After all said and done, ripping the car apart, putting it back together, it's exactly 40 hours, roughly 40 hours of labor a car. And we do an average of two a week and full production line. Not bad for a bunch of monkeys, huh? Anyways, this looks kind of cool, a little different. I spent the day yesterday figuring out all the pros and cons to this intake manifold. Um, realistically, you know, like I explained earlier, the uh, all the charcoal canister evap valves had a re you know we got rid of one of them, relocated one of them, plumbed all that. So I still was able to maintain all the half of the OE stuff and still kind of give it the race car theme. So I kind of went, you know, I did all the XRP uh, hose ends that go to everything, so it's not barbed. The only hose that's barbed that kind of honestly bothering me, and I might replace it. Every hose is XRP other than that thing. So that hose goes to a check valve, then goes to uh, a, a canister for vacuum. So it stores vacuum. Um, truth be told, I'm changing that thing, man. I, I got it. Look at that. Look how janky that looks. Look how janky it is. It's still a dash six, but it's a dash six barb because it goes to a barb check valve. So for me to change that to a da to a uh, X to a hose and XRP, I would need to run a check valve with dash six metal ends. That check valve alone is a hundred bucks, plus the hose end and hose. We're looking at about a hundred and fifty dollars alone just to be able to switch that hose to match everything up. Is it worth it? It was worth it. It's the fine details that separate, you know, us from the rest, right? Not that they do bad work. This kind of drives me fucking crazy. Just look at that, it looks janky, right? Take a step back, right? You can stand over it, like, God damn, who uses barb hose there? Everything else is XRP, balling as hell. Barb hose, all bad. Yeah, I'm gonna change that. So this thing's about, I said three, four hours of work left. Tomorrow we got uh, Supercar Saturday in collaboration with West Coast Exotic Cars, uh, DBR Detail. My buddy's from No Performance, Nobody Performance next door. Uh, it's gonna just be from 11 to 1. Swing on through, pick up some merch, talk to everybody, check out some cool cars. We probably have I don't know, six to eight twin turbo cars here right now. So if you're watching this and you still you still got time to take a drive to Temecula tomorrow morning, um, I'll be here for a little bit. I'll have my kids. So uh, say hi. It's all right. Don't be intimidated to say hi. Um, we're gonna try to fire this tomorrow to have it ready for everybody to see. So, I guess uh, stay tuned until tomorrow, if it's outside or not running. Also, next week will be dope because we're gonna have this on the dyno. Um, a Cash's car is strapped on the dyno currently, ready to be tuned. Um, like I'd mentioned, Tony's at GTR World Cup. Shout out to Tony, hopefully go sixes and wins that event. Wish Tony luck. Um, so, got everything done and just gonna hit it hard. Um, two cars are tuned first thing Monday. Uh, we got the new cars that showed up that we'll be ripping apart probably Sunday to have ready to build on Monday. Um, a lot of cars are being wrapped up, so stay tuned. Another thing is uh, Felipe's car, as we've been posting a lot about Felipe's car, his car's in route to Florida. He's actually from, Can oh, where's he from, Oklahoma or Oklahoma. Kansas? Oklahoma. Nah, he's from like Oklahoma. So his business and his first house is in Oklahoma. He just built a second home in Florida, and that's where he's gonna hang out most of the time. So we shipped it to Florida, so we could uh, go ahead and uh, give it to those Flor Florida people. Catch that car on the streets of, uh, where's he from? I don't know, somewhere in Florida. Tallahassee, Bam. Daytona or something? Stay, you see a green Huracan with no fucking bumper and four titanium exhaust? Go ahead, try to run it. I guarantee you he's gonna give you the sauce, baby. And that guy's wild too. So anyways, these cheap cars are coming not only national wide, but international. We got Kit going to, uh, What's that kid's name? He's a cool kid. I spent like a day going back and forth with this kid about, I mean, he's a smart kid. He doesn't just spend money to, you know, and, and not know what he's getting, right? I mean, uh, so this kid, cool kid, uh, Kenny. He asked a lot of technical questions. It asked a lot of, uh, to see real data, 60 to 130, so we're able to, per, you know, I'm always on the road messing with 60 to 130, figuring out the sweet spots so I could provide this information for people that do similar things, right? You get guys that do half mile, 60 to 130s, everyday driving, and when I could build you a car that does it all, 
So you know these cars on not low boost or kill mode, just you know, 13 pounds of boost. They do if that black car did 380, 375, 378, 380. You know, with another 100 horsepower, we get in the 360s, but it, it's essentially kill mode, and we don't want to give customers cars on kill mode, right? So Kenny's picked up an R8 Gen 2 turbo kit that's going to Costa Rica. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, it's actually the only Gen 2 R8 in Costa Rica, so we might go to Costa Rica. I, don't know. I gotta go to Australia, Costa Rica, Sweden. Where else do I gotta go? I think those are the next three countries I visit in the next couple months to install twin turbo kits. See you there. <laughs>